Hi, I'm Amy Wong and I'm a New Yorker cartoonist. Today I'm going to show you how to draw snails. What do you think it is about snails that makes them such a perennial cartoonist favorite? They are deceptively not as easy to draw, I think, as people would think, but they are easy to draw once you figure it out. And then they have certain characteristics. You know, they're slow, they have shells on their backs, they're a little bit slimy, but they have very specific characteristics that make them conducive to gags. Should we describe the cartoon? It's a, a building. You have the little flagpoles, the, the banners, you know, to attract attention. There's a sign that says pre-owned shells. It's sort of a play on a used car lot. I do think it's, it's interesting. I mean, the perspective here doesn't make sense because also the shells get a little smaller in the background, but if, if the vanishing point was as far away as the flags imply, the ones in the background and the store itself would be tiny. <laughs> I think it actually works better when the perspective isn't perfect in cartoons or else it looks almost too not funny. It looks a little too realistic. So your background is in architecture before you pivoted to cartooning. Did you have to sort of unlearn architectural drawing? I don't think I necessarily unlearned. I think I just didn't adhere to the rules as strictly. And I think I do it on purpose partly because I'm lazy, but I think I also do it because I do want it to look a little imperfect. I, th I think the funniest part of this cartoon for me is the couple that's looking for a shell together. <laughs> I drew this a while ago, so I don't even really remember why. Or... You don't question it when you look at it, like, yes, a yeah. couple would be going and looking for a car together. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really think about that. I think I was probably so fixated on making it look like a used car lot. I wasn't really thinking of the logistics of the snails, like how they're both gonna fit. With cartoons, you don't have to look too much into the logic, I guess. Perspective drawing is a type of drawing that makes objects in that drawing appear more three-dimensional or realistic. First, draw a wall that you're directly facing and pick a point that would be the vanishing point. And that point is where all the, I guess all the horizontal lines that are perpendicular to the wall that I'm facing would converge to. The simplest type of perspective would be one point perspective when you're not facing head on to a wall or you're facing a corner, you would use two point perspective. And that basically puts two vanishing points, one on each side of the drawing. You would want all the parallel lines to converge onto their respective vanishing points. So you would use the sidewalk lines, the, I guess the curb line, any of those lines, and they each converge to their own vanishing points. I actually don't really use technical perspective with the vanishing points and drawing the lines towards them in my cartoons. I usually just eyeball them. Even to get a cartoon, you have to suspend disbelief. So the perspective doesn't have to be 100% accurate for the cartoon to work. So in this cartoon, if I actually extend all the lines, you'll see that they don't converge to a single vanishing point. They kind of converge to a vanishing area. <laughs> so they're not even close, but you would never know without extending the lines. It has three snails in it. There are two that are moving along slowly. And far to the right is a snail walking with two legs. And the caption is, I'd be fast too if I had legs that long. So I love this cartoon. I feel like it's a great example of sort of using horizontal space as a pacing technique. How I decided on the horizontality was, um, well, I did want to show the faster snail pretty far ahead of the other snails. So I could only go in that direction. You don't want it to be a square cartoon because you do want to emphasize how much further ahead that the snail has gotten which actually in reality isn't that much further ahead. <laughs> the fact that the third snail is still pretty close and yet you have those yeah. lines indicating speed around <laughs> her legs is hilarious. And then she's smiling so she's kind of pretty happy with her situation. The idea for this one came from I'm taller than average and I'd be walking with other people and I'd be like, why is she taking so long? 
long. And this, like, you know, slower person would come up and she'd be like, I'd be fast too if I had legs that long. My partner is six foot four and I literally, like, sprint all of the time. I have no other pace other than just sprinting. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe this is the root of your uh, interest in snails, that like, everyone around you is a snail. Yeah, everybody else is slower. <laughs> Most of my cartoons are squarish, mainly because I don't usually show a lot of movement in my cartoons. And in this cartoon, it kind of emphasizes the lack of movement. The snail isn't moving very quickly, but I think the closeness and the fact that everything's close together emphasizes the stillness of the snail. I would make a cartoon taller, mostly if there was a physical reason. If I had, say, a waterfall or a skyscraper, or ladders, falling objects, a cliff scene would obviously require a taller proportion if you want to show the bottom of the cliff. I would make a cartoon wider if I wanted to delay the gag in some way because a reader can't really take in an entire cartoon at once so they might read it left to right and it takes them a little while to take it all in and then at the right is where I would place the gag. It's a captionless cartoon. It shows a snail and he's waiting to enter another snail's apartment and the snail inside the apartment is looking out two peepholes, but the way he or she is doing it is by poking his eyes through the peepholes. It's unclear to me whether the snails are enormous, and this is a sort of regular New York City apartment, or if this is a world in which snails have apartments. I think they're giant snails because it's a human world that has doors like that and apartments. Well, also it's like it has a doorknob. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> one interesting thing about this cartoon is I originally had it as one peephole with one eye poking in because that's how peepholes in apartment doors are like. And it didn't sell that way, but Colin Stokes, the associate cartoon editor, he said maybe try it with two eyes. So I did it with two eyes going through two peepholes and it sold. And it's funny because I remember when he suggested that, I was thinking, no, that's that's not right because apartment doors only have one people. It doesn't make any sense. How did you come up with 2C? 2C, that's actually my own apartment number. But it, I know it, it sounds like T-O like and then S-E-E, like to C. Uh, I didn't even think about that. I also like the idea of a doormat in a snail context because it does sort of remind you of the sliminess of the whole endeavor. Yeah, they definitely need doormats. <laughs> Probably on the inside and outside. <laughs> when I draw a snail first, I usually draw the opening of the shell. I make a little curve for it. And then I start the curve, I go up, I, I start from the outside of the curve and I spiral in. After the shell, I start drawing the snail flesh. I usually start at the back of the neck and I go up to where the eye stalks are. I draw two round eyes, finish the head and then do the rest of the body, I guess to the tail, which isn't really the tail, it's like the back of its foot and back up towards the shell. For snails in movement, you would draw them with their heads on the ground. I, th I think it makes them more aerodynamic. Snails that are inside their shells are the easiest because you just draw the shell. You don't have to draw any of their body. All right, and that's how you draw a snail.